So thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me and for everyone to coming. Okay, so let me give like a a very small description of what kinetic theory is. So you have uh, a density function, and you uh, which captures the meroscopic description, so not at the level of particles or at the level of fluid. And then uh, uh, you you the you study the evolution of this function f, which is the density function. X is is some uh, sub some domain. V is an R three, and uh, for this purposes of this talk, the domain will be R three. Okay. And by the way, if you have any questions, uh, uh, let me know. Whenever. The simplest model one can consider is is the is the transport equation, and there the particle is free stream with uh, with velocity v i. Okay, and there's no additional force. Okay, and the the purpose, like in this talk, I will consider like uh, uh, non cutoff Boltzmann. So you have transport, but you're coupling coupling it with a collisional operator. It's a nonlinear, non-local operator. Uh, I'll show what the operator is in a second, um, and I will I will consider like the so-called moderately soft potential regime. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll say everything what it is in the in the next slide. Okay, another thing is the non-cutoff Boltzmann uh, and the related Landau equations are, are smoothing, whereas the if you if you cut the cut the interaction, it's it's purely hyperbolic and there's no smoothing. And the other thing is, uh, these, this is a long range interaction for these two, these are long range. And the other one is, 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 is a short range one, okay. Okay, so, so this is how you define it. You have, uh, okay, the, the exact structure doesn't matter, but you have uh, a collision operator B. And uh, this, is, this is the difference of, of a product of uh, pre and post Velocity. So basically, um, these velocities v prime and v prime star are uh, so v star and v are the are the velocities of two particles, and then v prime and v star prime are their velocities after collision. And these are the formula for the velocities, which you can get by conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. Okay. And the interaction kernel. Um, that we have is is looks like this. It's v minus v star to the power gamma, and uh, there's a theta singularity, and uh, this is theta minus two to the power minus uh, minus two minus two s, where theta is is the angle between uh, between this vector sigma and and v minus v star. Okay, and so we are allowing s to be anything between zero and one. And uh, gamma plus two s is between uh, zero and two. So this is the this is the moderately soft uh, potentials regime. And uh, s between zero and one covers all the possibilities. And you should think of as the Landau being uh, 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 like in in the limit as s goes to one. Okay. Again, so the only thing you should kind of remember is uh, that we have uh, we can allow for sing we are allowing for singularities in gamma or in b minus v star and also in theta okay. all right now this is kind of well known and uh, um, like Boltzmann and Maxwell you know, Maxwell all knew this is basically uh, collisions usually lead to relaxation and uh, this is captured by the the, the so-called H theorem Basically, what happens is your entropy, which is defined this way, it, it should always decrease. And furthermore, the the entropy is zero uh, if and only if f is a local Maxwellian. Local meaning that you have uh, you have a density, like a temperature, and and uh, a, a bulk velocity, and it looks like an uh, like a Gaussian essentially. Okay. Now. Even though this is true, you uh, in in the near vacuum regime, you expect the collisions are very rare, and there is the dispersion coming from the transport is what should really be the main mechanism. Okay, so this has to be proved. Um, uh, but as a few related results, El Ilner and uh, Shinbrot proved this global existence result for uh, cutoff Boltzmann. So you should think like uh, they cut off this uh, singularity in theta. By either um, by either actually chopping it off near theta equals zero, or or just using some other smooth uh, some other smoothing like L one smoothing or something. 
anyway. Now, Toscani also proved that there exists data for which the limit is not local Maxwellian. So in some sense that actually dispersion is the main mechanism and uh, uh, and like uh, entropic dissipation is not is not the is not driving the whole uh, dynamics. In fact, you can also you also have a scattering theorem um, due to Bardosh, Gamba, Golsey, Levermore, and and a newer version. So this I think this one is in L one, and uh, uh, this one is in L infinity or something. But you have you also have scattering results. Um, stability of vacuum and like an anal analogous uh, theorem as Toscani was proved. Uh, for Landau equations with, with moderately soft potential. So this you should think of as like gamma in, in uh, minus two and zero. This was proved very recently by, by Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Luke. Uh, uh, so the, the difference is somehow Landau equations, you have a, you have like, it's like a smoothing operator. You should think of it as like a Laplacian in V, whereas these ones are, are really the zeroth order operators. Okay. And this kind of makes things much harder, but I'll come back to this in a second. And uh, as I said, the elliptic nature of the collisional term uh, poses a lot of issues. Specifically, I want to treat it as a perturbation. So there are the issues of decay, but there's also the issue of uh, um, like uh, loss of derivatives and loss of velocity waves and all sorts of those things. And these are all coupled. Okay. And uh, and I I did this uh, the case of hard potentials which is in gamma between zero comma one, uh, in uh, I guess two years ago. Okay. Finally, the vector field method has been uh, fairly successful, and I, I'll say what the vector field method is. But for now, let's we just say that it's, it's been fairly successful in collisionless models. Uh, <clears throat> for example, see Lindblad and Taylor. Feynman, uh, Jordi Smulovici, and, and Smulovici, just to say a few uh, names. The first two are are, are for uh, um, Einstein Blasov, and there's the stability of Minkowski, and the last one is uh, giving a different proof than uh, Bardos de Gaunt to the stability of vacuum for, for Blasov. Okay. So, what is the main theorem? As I said, you fix. Uh, a singularity parameter parameter s between zero and one, and and uh, a gamma, which is the which tells you about the uh, the interaction, such that uh, gamma plus two s is between zero and two. So this is important, and and a constant d zero. Then you can find like a small parameter epsilon zero, which depends on uh, your constant d zero, gamma and s, such that if if F initially is a small in a weighted norm. So you also have to weight it with the with the Gaussian. I, I'll I'll say a few words later why. And you have to put in these uh these uh these space and velocity weights. Or you can just think of it as uh as just uh like decay in space. And if it's if the energy is small enough and high enough uh Sobel of norms. And also you assume that if f is f is non-negative, then you have a global solution to Boltzmann uh, with the initial data fn. And uh, the solution actually remains non-negative for all the times. In fact, I don't prove this in the paper, but like uh, a theorem like uh, Toscani and Jonathan also should be true here in the sense that you can find an initial set of data for which uh, you don't converge to uh, Maxwellian. Is that is the main theorem clear? Okay. Okay, so let me just, so now let me give like uh, some description as to why we expect this to be true. So since we expect dispersion to come from, uh, from transport, so let's look at what kind of dispersion we can get from transport. Okay, so Transport is nice because you can explicitly write down the solution in terms of the data. And uh, you can check that actually x minus dv comma v is actually solves the equation. Okay. Now, if you assume your data is sufficiently localized in x and v, 
then you can uh, this 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 decay can be proved. So if you uh, if you take L one in V, so basically you velocity average, and then you take L infinity in X, then you actually uh, get minus three decay. So so let's forget about beta. Just think beta is zero. Then every X derivatives you decay like one plus T to the power minus three. Now, when you take velocity derivatives, you can check when you take a der derivative of this, you have to pop out a v, uh, a t. So every velocity derivative makes your decay worse by one, for example. Okay. And if you don't velocity average, then the best you can say is 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 boundedness or or growth in in the case of uh, velocity derivatives. Is that okay? okay. You also have the following L2 bound. Uh, basically, if you if you take L1 in V and L2 in X, then you get like a minus three half as a decay instead of minus three. And you also get boundedness from here. Okay, these are purely transport bounds. And and the in fact, you can just see them from uh, from your initial data, like just from this. So the, I'm not saying, uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really, I haven't proved anything yet. This is just true for transport. Okay, now, all right, so let, now that we know that we can hope for some decay, let's look at uh, what we can do with the, with, the, with the Boltzmann operator. So one can think that the, the Boltzmann operator essentially is like, a, uh, is like a fractional flat diffusion for, with the order S, okay. So this is in fact true because you can, we have this, uh, this estimate, which is by Gressman strain and, like various other uh, other teams by Amuxi and Imber, Sylvester, and and a lot of people here use it. Is basically that um, the collision operator when you couple it or when you uh, pair it with H, you can prove a bound which is like F is in L one, V in L infinity x, G is in H two of S. So you have two S derivatives hitting on G, and and H is in L two L two. Okay, there are these other velocity weights, but let's not worry about them for now. So you can see if 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 f is bounded, this really is uh, is essentially like a flat diffusion type uh, estimate. Okay. Now, if you assume that f, g, and h satisfy decay estimates similar to transport decay plus boundedness, uh, then you can see that this thing should decay like one plus t to the power minus three. This thing grows like one plus t to the power two s, and this thing is just bounded. So in total, you have one plus t to the power minus three and one plus t two s. Since s is less than one, this is actually uh, less than one plus t to the power one minus. So basically, you have integrable decay. Or sorry, minus. Or let me just say it, one plus epsilon. So you have you you can actually integrate this out in T. So you you hope that you can treat it perturbatively in the in the near vacuum regime, because this is also nonlinear. So you have uh, you can get like small lists from these things. Okay. So now, so this thing is, if you can capture the this dispersion, then you you can hope to uh, treat. Uh, the the Boltzmann operator as a uh, the Boltzmann term as a as a perturbation. Okay. Now, how do I get uh, this sort of decay that I was saying for for transport, but as uh, as a purely uh, uh, in like using this, uh, like you just using inequalities, then we can capture this using these space time weights. So what this means is if you initially assume you're, you know, this basically is as times minus one, it's, it says that if you're spatially, uh, uh, like if, if you're well localized, then L1 actually decays like uh, one plus T to power minus three half in L2 of V, but at the cost of, of some velocity weights, which is three half plus a delta. And, uh, L1 is actually also bounded by one plus T to the minus three with uh, some velocity weights, which is like three plus Delta. But now you have to allow for L infinity in V. So 
in fact, then you can you can try to propagate these sort of weighted estimates to get decay. Um, and note that the second estimate, if you want to prove uh, one t one plus t one minus three, then you have to prove L infinity estimate. You have to propagate these L infinity bounds. Okay. Whereas for the first one, you can just get away with uh, proving energy type bounds. Is that okay? All right. Now, you can think of Landau, as I said, as the limit of S goes to one, then you can have an estimate of the form uh, F in L1, G in H2, and, and H in L, L2, L2. Okay, so assuming you have uh, transport like decay, you get only get like, uh, you barely get non-integrable decay. So you, this, you get decay like one plus t to power minus one for the, for the non-linear terms. So, but this is a fake problem because you have a null structure or you, you, there is some more structure to the non-linearity. And uh, so Jonathan Luke proves uh, a stability of vacuum for lambda with, with gamma in between minus two and zero. Uh, but in that paper, he has to prove point by his bounds. So, as I showed you, you need like if you need one plus t to minus three decay, you need like point wise bounds. And uh, for that, he uses the maximum principle, which you have because it's a, it's a it's a degenerate sort of uh, uh, it's a degenerate sort of equation, uh, elliptic equation. Okay. Now, in in the in the paper that I did. For the case of hard potentials, I can do everything with just an energy-based approach, and I also have to use the null structure. Okay. Now, so what's what is Boltzmann? Now you should think that it's kind of easier than lambda of anything, but due to non-locality of this uh, of this operator, it seems a bit harder to propagate these sort of point-wise bounds. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it, it just seems harder. So again, if you use only uh, the L2 estimates, if you only propagate these L2 estimates, you can only hope for one plus T to minus three half decay. And this is not enough to kill this one plus T to two S growth, especially if S is bigger than one four. Okay. So we need to find another way to get uh, the full minus three decay, but only using energy methods. Because I don't want to, propagate any sort of uh, uh, point-wise estimates by themselves. Okay, and the way we do this is, is using uh, a vector field, which, is, which also appears in, in Jonathan's work. And this in fact commutes with the transport operator. Uh, any questions? Okay, you can continue. Thank you. Yeah. So how do you get this extra decay? And the idea is, <coughs> the idea is, uh, is essentially this estimate. I'll show you how to prove this estimate. It's, it's fairly straightforward. Basically, you can gain you can gain uh, you can gain minus three half decay by going from L infinity in X to L two in X. So basically, this is some sort of a Sobel of embedding. But instead of using partial X, I use Y as the vector field. <clears throat> okay. What do you do? So you do a fundamental theorem of calculus. You take a soup uh, in X, and you can uh, you can bound this by taking three derivatives in X. I mean, this is overkill, but uh, whatever. I, I allow for many derivatives. <clears throat> now, if you can write partial X as uh, t plus one inverse y minus partial v, you integrate by parts in v, <clears throat> you will get the result. And uh, yeah, so so basically what I'm saying is you keep the Y ones and you integrate out the V ones. Why are the Y ones better? Because they commute with the transport operator, whereas partial V does not. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you use the vector field trick and the, and the space time weights together, you can get like, uh, you can get the whole one plus T minus three decay if you go from L infinity in X and L1 in V to L2, L2. So in fact, I have not used any uh, point-wise bounds. Like I haven't not propagated any point-wise bound by themselves. I mean, of course I, I do Sobolev embedding, so I do have point-wise bounds, but 
I'm not propagating them by themselves. So I'm not, I haven't used any maximum principle. Okay. Now, let me talk about some other issues. So another issue is the estimate I showed you, which is uh, due to a MOOCSI, Gressman strain and Imbert and Sylvester. Uh, this estimate for them is okay because they have a coercive term. The, they use the elliptic term, but I don't want to use the elliptic term. So there is a potential loss at, uh, at the top or the penultimate order. So whenever G is like, uh, so you think of whenever G is like partial X alpha partial V beta S and an alpha plus beta plus omega is like the top order, then you, then this estimate loses. And even, even if this is N minus one, then you still lose that. So you need a new estimate to uh, to take care of this this loss of derivative issue. Okay. To overcome this issue, there is this uh, clever integration by part trick, which was used by Henderson, Snellson, and Tarfulia for the local existence result. And this depends on the machinery of Imbert and Sylvester. So, <clears throat> as a side remark. Uh, this estimate, when this was proved by uh, Gressman and Strain, they put like an L2 and V here, which is good enough for them, but, but we actually need L1 because we need to use uh, this uh, velocity averaging and the estimate that I showed before to get time decay. And this is exactly where the, the machinery of Imbert and Sylvester is actually very good because they use like um, uh, this, this so-called uh, integral differential operator stuff and where there you can actually prove very easily that there is an L1 uh, L1 uh, norm and not an L2. Okay. So the idea is that instead of putting the 2S, uh, 2S here, you put the 2S on F. Uh, this, is what, this is what I do in my paper, but uh, Henderson, Stenfer and Tarfulia, they estimate F in, in a holder space. Uh, which is fine for a local existence result, but if you want to do, um, if you want to do like, if you want to take keep track of the decay, uh, taking a taking a, a holder in V is bad because then you have to use Murray's inequality to go to uh, Sobolev, and then you're losing decay. Okay. So I develop like uh, new Sobolev estimates to take care of this issue. <coughs> Now, finally, the as I said, the other issue is a moment loss issue. As you can see, this estimate has uh, uh, s plus gamma over two. Now, when gamma plus two s is bigger than zero, uh, you have to estimate this norm on the right hand side. But only on the left hand side, you only have h in L two L two. So, but the good thing is this issue was already there for Landau and was taken care of uh, by H Henderson, Snellson, and Tarfulia by using an exponential weight. And of course, this this also has showed up in in works of uh, Amuzi and and Renjun and and a lot of like this is a well known well known way to take care of this. Um, just to be precise, we use uh, like a Gaussian weight, which is uh, uh, so, so G is F times, so you basically assume an estimate on, on uh, you assume that F is bounded by uh, a Gaussian. Uh, and this, the, the radius of the Gaussian is D of T, which, which uh, is like, sorry, it's, it's one plus that. That's so uh, it's plus D zero. Okay. Anyway, so this, 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 starts with 2d0, but it goes to d0 as time goes to infinity. And if you write down the equation for this g, you get like transport plus a nice bulk term now, uh, which we use to take care of these uh, perturbative terms, which are the collational terms. Okay.
All right. Now the next issue that I have is you have to commute these space-time weights with the Boltzmann operator. Um, for the case of uh, Landau, there, this issue is not there because like there is no V star. Here, when you take so this is this is what so basically what I'm doing is I want to commute in. Uh, so you multiply when you do an energy estimate, you multiply with x minus t plus uh, x minus t plus on v well, four times h. But now, what you actually control is is this. So you have to take the difference and see if if this is small. Uh, <clears throat> and when you write down, then you generate a term which is like a difference. Uh, a difference of these uh, these weights. Okay. Uh, so why this why is this an issue? Now, um, we also so B has B has uh, this singularity. We need to take care of the singularity, and we do this by by getting V minus V prime. Uh, as the as like v minus v prime square, which we get by taking by by bounding this by its derivative times v minus v prime. Right, this this is this is bounded by the derivative of the same thing. The right dv of this the space time weight times v minus v prime, and then you get two of those. And since v minus v prime is v minus v star square times sine square theta, this kind of takes care of this uh, the singularity. Okay, I have taken care of the singularity, but I have the now generated like one plus t square as the growth. And the the decay that I have is 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 only one plus t minus three. So now I'm back to like one plus t to power minus one as the decay for these uh, for these commutator terms. So these commutator terms are, are worse than the actual, uh, um, than the main terms in terms of uh, the decay. So this is this is an issue that, that has to be taken care of. Thankfully, the similar issue uh, had to be taken care of by Luke for, for the Landau case. So what we do is we take, we use another structure to take care of these, uh, of these issues. Okay. So what is the null structure? If you are sufficiently localized, we can actually expect better estimates than what I showed for the transport. And there are three things that are possible. Xt is either not too close to V, Xt is not too close to V star, or, or V minus V star is small. These are the three things that can happen. What does that mean? If, if gamma plus 2s is bigger than zero, uh, you can write down V minus V star to the power delta, Basically, you can get a decay, an extra decay in uh, in t, at the cost of these extra space time weights. Now, you can of course only do that when uh, when delta is between zero and gamma plus two s. So if, if gamma plus two s is less than zero, then this this doesn't work. And this is one of the reasons why we can only treat the case when gamma plus two s is strictly bigger than zero. So, all right, so now let me look at the a weighted estimate. So what do I do? I, you consider the equation for G, you take derivatives, specifically these derivatives, and you multiply by X minus T plus one power four times the same derivative of G. And you write down the estimate. So you get like L infinity estimate and L2, L2, L2 estimate. L infinity in time in L2 and L2 space and L2 the bulk term, which I generated with a with a nice V term. You have the initial data term, you have the commutator terms, and you have the main uh, collisional term. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to show how I can close the the energy estimate. So the commutator terms I can take care of. Okay, I don't know why I said easily because this is 
the the sticky point but okay we can take care of that and i'll show you how to do that uh but let me show you some some details on how to bound the uh the collisional term so all right so now let's look at the case when uh, the derivatives you're taking or the derivatives that fall on uh, these derivatives so alpha prime prime beta prime prime and omega prime prime uh is, is strictly le is, is less than uh the main minus two or equal to main minus two then i can put two s derivatives on this g or the script g and this works there's no issue here now when you're at the top top order when um script g is is basically all the derivatives hitting on G, then I cannot use this anymore. And, and okay, the, the good thing is you have some structure because now G and H are not different. They're actually script G and script G itself. So there is the special cancellation, which we get because of the structure of the operator. And you can put one plus, uh, like two S derivatives on, on F in, uh, in an L1 norm, basically. So it's W1 to S. And you can put L2, L2 on, on G. Okay. And, and this is this is important, right? Like because otherwise you would have a, a loss of derivative issue. Finally, the only thing that I have to show you now for the collisional term is, is what estimate do I use for the penultimate order? So when when uh, alpha prime prime beta prime prime and omega prime prime are are one less than the top. So here, you should think of as uh, the script f script g and uh, the the h is like script uh, a derivative of script g. So what you can what the estimate we prove is you put f the script f in w one one. You put the script g in h. This is H2S minus one, this is W11, and this is L2L2. L2. Now, S is less than one, so here you have no, no derivative loss either. Okay, and finally, the other thing that you should note is all, in all of these estimates, um, script G and H will be accompanied with X minus T plus one square but the uh, the script f will not be so so script g is like uh is a thing as script g as uh, derivatives of g times x minus t plus 1 v square okay my script g is not good but yeah anyway so the point is script g will always have script g and h will always have a space time weight uh, the f will not because you want, or it will not have the top one. You, it will not have x minus t plus one square. The the point is, I want to use the space time weights to get the decay when I can when I go from l one in v to l two in v. Uh, is that clear? Okay. Yeah, so next thing, then now the next estimate I wanna show you is the is this uh, commutator term, which, uh, which, which causes a lot of issues. Okay, so, so what, are the, what is the commutator term? As I showed, the commutator term is, is uh, um, the collision term times x minus t plus one power four h. And then the term that we actually estimate is uh, you commute in the x minus t plus one square with the with the script g, and then uh, the other one you you let be outside with the script h. And the estimate we prove is uh, is for like I said, think that delta is small. Then you can get. Uh, Instead of getting one plus t squared as the growth, you now get one plus t power two minus delta. But at the cost of uh, x minus t plus one v two delta in this l one v, and the other ones are are l two l two. So okay, how is it just how is this different? 
And these ones, uh, sorry. Uh, in the in the in the main term with the collisional terms, I have no x minus tv uh, weights in the term with strip f. But here I actually allow for a small space time uh, like weight already in L one b. But the the good thing is uh, this is a very small weight, and and I only need three three half plus delta to go from L one to L two. Well, and get uh, only need this much to go to uh, uh, go from L one to L two to get uh, and and get the the one plus t minus three have to get. Okay. So if delta is small, then it's fine. And because I I am propagating uh, x minus t plus one square bounds, uh, three half plus three delta is still small than, uh, smaller than two for delta small enough. Okay. But you also have this extra term T, which is different for, uh, which is different for different orders. So at the top order, you put one S derivative on script F, uh, and you also have a growth with one plus t, but anything that is not top order, you put uh, the derivative, the two s minus one derivative on script G. So this is h two s minus one, and this is w one s. Right. So all in all, since uh, so this this has a growth of uh, one plus t to power s plus one, and this has a growth of one plus t to power two s. But since we have minus three decades, we can take care of these, right? Because you have one plus t minus three coming from this term and one plus t minus three coming from this term. Uh, this, you still have integrable decay in, uh, in t. Okay. Now let me put everything together and, and I'll, I'll, I'll give like a, a short uh, recap of everything we have done. So since we take V derivatives, I have to put in uh, these T weights so that these are still bounded by epsilon square. So we assume something worse. We assume that this is actually bounded only by three half, the energy, whereas we hope that it's better. So this is why, so this is what we're gonna bootstrap. Now, the nonlinear term that I showed they can be estimated by uh, uh, nine, like nine quarters, because right, because you have three of them, and each of them is at least size epsilon three half or three quarters. Now, if you have three of them, then it's uh, like uh, nine nine fourths, which is actually bigger than uh, or less than epsilon square. And you have uh, this decay which is uh, integrable decay coming from these nonlinear terms or these uh, collisional terms. So you actually can integrate out, integrate that out and you get that this is bounded by nine, nine fourths. So this energy that we were trying to estimate is in fact bounded by nine, nine, nine quarters. So I assume something worse and I, I improved this. So by a, a usual open and closed argument, this, this must have been true to begin with. Because initially, by, for local existence, if we assume in this, if so locally, initial data is actually bounded by epsilon square. So at least for time one, you have this bound. Now, uh, if you assume a bound of epsilon three three half, you you can propagate it. In fact, you can make it better. So you must so actually this bound should have been true because it was true locally, and because that was true, now the the improved bound is true. Okay, so this this is the usual bootstrap argument that people have, 
and so we can close the whole the whole uh, scheme. Yeah. So uh, I'll recap, but let me give a few future direction and open problems. Um, so scattering theory for for non cutoff Boltzmann and Landau equation is is open. Like this, nothing has been done there. Just because you have a smoothing operator now, so it's not clear what to do. But but near vacuum, we know that somehow uh, Maxwellian is not the right thing to go to. Second thing is uh, we only consider the case when gamma plus two s is is between uh, zero and two, but the, the Coulombic case, or or let me write it down for Landau, because it's easier to see for gamma less than or equal to minus two and between minus three, we don't know anything if this, the vacuum is stable or if it's not stable, because the dispersion is not strong enough to say anything. And uh, uh, finally, so this is, an analogy for Landau, the stability of vacuum for hard potentials for the non cutoff Boltzmann is also open. So this is like uh, gamma plus two s uh, bigger than bigger than equal to two. I think. So this is also open. okay. So now let me let me just say in a few words like uh, what what is the scheme. So what we do is um, we treat the Q F G perturbatively. And to do that, you need enough decay. Need enough time decay. And what are the issues? The issues are one, loss of derivatives at top and uh, penultimate order for the, for the main term. But you also have these issues of uh, commutator issues. And you also have uh, the velocity rate issues. These are all in some sense kind of coupled. So um, you, like commutator also has the loss of derivative issue, but you can take care of all of these things. Uh, and, and basically the upshot is uh, dispersion from transport is enough to uh, to treat QF T perturbatively. Or another way to say this is the transport, like the dispersion from transport is actually the main mechanism uh, driving the, 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 the dynamics of the problem. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, at least in the in the moderately soft potential and the hard potential case, the collisions don't really do much. Since it's rare, like the collisions don't even happen that much, so it's 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 uh, they don't do anything. Um, right. So, yeah. So the, the 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 whole thing is: can you get can you propagate the cave that you get from uh, the transport? Second, can you can you use that decay to prove that your uh, Collisional operator is 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 perturbative, and finally you just have to take care of these other issues, which are which are not present for the case with the near the Maxwellian. I mean they're still there, but but to a less, lesser extent. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and I think the worst one that that haven't been seen anywhere is kind of this uh, this commutator issue uh, because of space time waves. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll stop now and 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 thank you for having me.